Academy for giving me this opportunity. Ma'am, I guess you'll be sharing the slides. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so today we are going to see what exactly is classroom psychology. Right. So first of all, what we have to understand over here is that why we have to know about psychology, how to maintain a class. Now, this classroom psychology, when I'm speaking about like classroom psychology, it, it is relevant to school children up till the college children. So all the teachers, teachers belonging to any fraternity that let it be school going or college going, this uh, topic for today is applicable for all of them. So for, first of all, what exactly you mean by classroom psychology? So classroom psychology, you know, it is an application of uh, psychological principles to enhance the teaching and learning. It helps the teachers to refine and develop instructional methods and create um, learning rich classrooms. OK, so we get to know about how the student is and according to them, we can tailor make our study material so that it reaches to them. That's why classroom psychology is very important. OK, now, nowadays, this is a very important subject in uh, B.Ed. Uh, but as such, also, even when people who without completing their B.Ed, when they get into this teaching profession, it is very important for us to know how psychology plays a very important role, especially the student psychology, how you can understand them so that you can deliver the content to them. Next slide, ma'am. Now here, classroom management, <clears throat> when it comes to what uh, classroom management is not about having the right rules. It is about having the right relationship. What we mean by this? Normally, what we see in a classroom, if you are having a, a proper board, uh, number of chairs, or you have fan, all the resources which are given in the classroom. Based on the resources given in the classroom, we think that even the right qualification of the teacher, we think that we can manage the class. But it isn't like that. Okay, frankly speaking, it is all about having the right relationship with the student. We all know that we have a mix of students in a classroom. So we have to build connection uh, with them. You have to develop good rapport with them. You have to understand the mind of the student because students come from various backgrounds. When students come from various backgrounds, you know, their cognitive ability, their ability to understand us, their ability to understand the concept that we want to deliver to them, everything keeps varying. So it's very important for the teacher to understand the student psychology. Okay, students come from varying backgrounds. Some are very good. Some have very good grasping power. Some have language problems. Suppose they come from a other state. Okay, so first you have to make the student feel comfortable. Always keep in mind when the student likes us, then irrespective of the subject, he will try to understand the content. It all depends upon what kind of relation we build up with the student. We are like their parents. As long as the students are with us, in either in school or in college, we are their whole and soul guardians, their parents. So let's build a good rapport with them so that whatever content we want to deliver them goes to their head directly. Next slide, ma'am. Now, the very important concept over here is classroom psychology. What are the parameters? OK, so firstly, if you see students' belief, or perception. Now, what do you mean by students' belief or perception? As I told you, uh, the student, they feel now, for instance, suppose a student is coming uh, from a vernacular background, okay, where he's not exposed to uh, social media or he's not exposed to uh, YouTube, where he can't learn on himself. OK, so you have people coming from such background. So definitely uh, their scope of understanding things is a bit less and it also depends upon the uh, grasping capacity that is the cognitive power of the student the intelligence of the student and uh, all these things so when keeping all these things in mind no, what we, we teachers have to do we have to treat all the students equally irrespective of the student's belief or perception see sometimes when the student comes to the class he, he feels that i'm a average student i'm a below average student so i don't know how am i going to fare here. I don't know when I take up this subject, uh, whether I will pass, whether I will understand the content. So first of all, try to relax the student. We have to treat the students equally. 
irrespective of their intelligence. All the 50 students or 60 students in the class are equal to us, irrespective of their cognitive skills, of their vernacular background, whether they know the language. Most of the time, we see the ones who have good percentage, the ones who we ask them, what was your 10th standard percentage? What was your inter percentage? Whatsoever it is. So based on the percentage, we start treating the students. It shouldn't be like that irrespective of whatever they have scored in the previous class, we are going to start their journey in our school or college afresh. Okay, so we have to treat all the students as capable learners. Then the second point is what students already know affects their learning. Now, definitely this is about the students learning history. It, it helps us to shape what we are uh, trying to teach them. And so we have to see, as I told you before, it depends upon the student's grasping capacity. Sometimes a student quickly grasps the concept, whatever we are telling. Sometimes it may take time for the student. First time he may not understand, she may understand in the second time or in the third time. Or sometimes we have to modify our way of teaching. We have to cite several examples or we have to connect it to the existing situation. Okay, connect them to the real world and then try to and uh, try to make them understand the concept. So there are various ways of uh, teaching. So the teacher has to have a lot of patience in order to understand what is the learning style of the student. Okay, sometimes the student's learning style is he will only listen to the uh, class like a song and he will grasp it. Sometimes the student learn by writing. So each and every student has a unique way of learning. The teacher, when we build a rapport, when we build connection with the student, we try to understand their learning style and then we try to deliver our content. That is the meaning of the second point. Third one, students' cognitive development and learning are not limited by general stages of development. So it sometimes, you know, it so happens that, you know, we, we get to understand, we get to know that, uh, okay, now you have reached 10th standard or now you have reached graduation. So this is the level of understanding. So this is your basic knowledge. So you already are aware of it. And I'm just going to expand over it. It is never like that. It's never like that because, you know, we do have different stages of cognitive development, but children are unique. Students are unique in the class. Okay, there's something different in each and every student. So it's always advisable, you know, that we uh, understand them, we teach the basics, and then focus more on the actual concept. At least you have to refresh, refresh or revise the basics and then get into the major topic. Okay, next one is learning is based on context. So generalizing learning to a uh, new context is not spontaneous. Rather, it needs to be facilitated. So we know no, now learning, uh, the teacher, uh, she has become a guide. We are just like a facilitator because of so much of social media on track. Uh, students definitely who are interested uh, after listening to our class, they also try to surf the net and try to gain more knowledge. So right now, the teacher's role has become a facilitator. We have to pose the right questions to the student so that it, you know, um, it instigates their creative thinking. Right, uh, previously, you know, during our time, everything was spoon fed to us. You know, the teacher used to give the question, the teacher used to give us the answer. Our work is only to learn and then write the exam and pass. But now it is not like that. Now. Uh, it is very much important that the students have creative skills. They develop creative skills. So it's very important that the teacher takes up the role of a facilitator. Try to pose the right questions to the students so that they have the creative ability. Let them know what they are learning. Okay, it is not for the sake of marks. Whatever education that we are imparting to them, whatever knowledge that we are imparting to them is not for the sake of marks alone. It is for them to make a living in the world. They have to, apart from gaining knowledge, they also have to gain wisdom to survive in the society. Because, you know, in society, we all know as grown-ups, we are, we are all facing uh, the various uh, hurdles in the society. So, you know, along with the concept, they also have to understand why they are learning this and how are they going to apply it in the real-time world. Okay, then uh, acquiring long-term knowledge and skill is largely dependent on practice. Ma'am, could you scroll it, please? It largely depends uh, dependent on practice. So one most important thing is none of the concepts are clear just by once okay they have to practice it again and again and the best way to practice anything is by writing and practicing okay orally how many ever times you know whatever content is there uh, it stays in mind 
for a very short span of time. It is always advisable that you write and practice, but practice is very important. In order to refine our skills, it is advisable that we tell our students to practice. Next one, ma'am. Yeah, clear, explanatory, and timely feedback to students is important for learning. So what exactly happens, you know, let it be either in the school level or college level, we give them feedback. When do we give them feedback? We give them only when the half yearly or unit test is conducted, when we show them the answer scripts or during the end of the semester. It shouldn't be like that. Feedback is actually the medicine for champions, right? The students get to know. Timely feedback is very important. You know, uh, the timing of feedback is very critical so that the student tries to improvise it in the next test. OK, rather than on daily basis also, we can give feedback. Sometimes the student knows the content, but he doesn't know how to express it. Right. Sometimes the student is very good at expression, but he is zero with the content. So it is our duty as facilitators. Right now, the teacher's role is not only teaching. The teacher's role is actually uh, fac facilitating the student to give a good outcome along with the content, how he is going to present it also. So it is a teacher's duty to give the timely feedback to the student. Uh, it is good even if they give it on daily basis so that student knows where, which skill he is lacking and how he can improvise over it. Then students self-regulation, assess learning and self-regulatory skills can be taught. Now student self-regulation here means that how the student is controlled, self-control of the student. Means, you know, sometimes what happens when the student doesn't fare well, either in the exam or on daily basis when we ask questions, you know, the student gets demotivated if he doesn't fare well. It is the role of the teacher here once again to motivate the student. It's OK, you didn't answer now. Might be you didn't get the concept clearly. It's OK, this is the way you understand. Or else, if you have any doubts, please come to me. There are students who suffer with stage fear. There are students who are very conscious to ask in the class. So we will have to take some extra time, build confidence in the student so that he asks the questions in the class. If not, initially during the phase, they can ask us and come ask us separately. Also, they can come to our the staff rooms or cabins and ask us separately. But it is always important that student, apart from gaining knowledge, also should know what skills he possesses, how whether he has self-control. Is he aware of himself? What What is he lacking? What is he good with? All these self-regulatory skills are also very important. So the teacher can uh, show a way for a student to understand about himself, not only content delivery. Content delivery, if we are not teaching the student with present times, the student can also take it from the internet. But you know the other things, whether the student lacks confidence or whether the student is overconfident or whether the student is uh, you know, absent-minded, whether he has good memory power, whether he has got good oratory power, all these things the internet definitely can't tell. So it is we as teachers who can really show the way to the student. You know, we can tell these are the good points in you, these are the bad points in you. Try to improve this, how you can improve it. All these things we can tell them. Students tend to enjoy learning and perform better when they are more intrinsically than extrinsically motivated to achieve. So here, when I say intrinsically, what it means is that the inner inner self of the student, like you know, uh, you know, when they are uh, when they understand about themselves. Okay, see, it's something you know. Uh, when I'm interested only, I will learn it completely. If I'm not interested, if it is just like a formality, my parents are paying fees and I have to do something in the society, I have to stand for myself. The student is coming and sitting and just listening to our classes. He is only listening with the intention to write the exam. But that is not our main motto. Our main motto is that the student should understand the concept, apply the concept and gain wisdom through it. So for that, you know, the in inner core of the student should be prepared. The teacher's role is not only content delivery. The teacher's role is to prepare him as an individual for the society. So previously, at least, you know, only content delivery worked out because there was no internet. But right now, with so much of information available just at the click of your hand, okay, even in our WhatsApp, we are having uh, AI. Board. So not everything is available at the click of our hand. So in which way we can make a difference in our students' life is by creating 
um, you know, trying to inculcate or trying to imbibe certain qualities with which he will, he or she will stand strong in the society, can face any kind of problem. So for all that, you know, uh, we have to build their inner core. That is what I mean by saying intrinsically. Intrinsically, they have to be motivated. So teach them good values. Teach them how they can face the world along with the content. Then teachers' expectations about the students affect students' opportunities to learn their motivation and their learning outcomes. You know, sometimes, you know, we say in the class, oh, how come you, you scored so less? I thought you will get good marks. So when we say this, no, first of all, the girl or the boy is under stress. Oh, I have to read because, you know, my teacher has got high expectations. At the other time, on the other side, you know, the other students feel, oh, man is partial. Man is only talking to uh, so-and-so person and they are all demotivated. So it's always uh, not advisable, you know, to have or to show it to the student at least that we have some expectations. Definitely as a teacher, when we are teaching, uh, we definitely build some expectations, right? Uh, we look, we count upon certain students who can really score well. But I don't think so it is uh, advisable for us to exhibit to the students because, you know, it's a kind of stress on the student. I have to, otherwise my physics teacher is going to uh, scold me if I don't reach so-and-so target. I have to get so-and-so marks. So, you know, that is an additional stress to the students which can lead them into depression. So let's, uh, let's leave them free. Let's finish off our work of motivating them and delivering the content. The outcome is in their hand how much they are going to practice how hard they are going to uh, work that will decide the outcome let's not put our additional uh, stress on them by having expectations then emotional well-being influences educational performance learning and development as i told you emotional well-being no this is very very important uh, to uh, to address this point basically the family atmosphere at home suppose the parents are always fighting or else there is an unhealthy atmosphere at home or else there's poverty at home when we uh, you know show all these things when these things are uh, visible to our children at home they, there's a kind of you know uh, trauma in their mind so when they come to school and when we see our students even though we deliver the content everything is not received by them because they are not emotionally stable they are somewhere disturbed so sometimes you know uh, the tiny fights that happen between uh, parents at home that has to be off the screen it shouldn't be visible to the uh, children because you know that's somewhere underlying impression oh my parents are not happy because you know the children um, knowingly or unknowingly they are uh, they are more influenced by their parents and teachers and third is friends. So you now if parents are not happy at home or, or if there is any kind of problems happening at home all the time, irrespective of uh, financial problem or uh, any other problem, any other problem normally that we see in certain uh, nuclear families like conflicts or in joint families where there are too many people at home and there is no uh, good resources for the student to study so he is you know all these things are in the mind of the student or if the student is more addicted to cell phone or the parents are not pay, both the parents are working not taking care of the child okay then the there is uh, the child feels as if there is no one for him to, you know to fall back and discuss how his day was in the college or how his day was in the school H however big the child is the child always feels like coming back home and sharing whatever happened in the class so we always have to lend a ear to our children to listen to what exactly happened when all such things don't happen you know, this uh, child is not um, emotionally stable so when the child is not emotionally stable even though he has a good memory power good grasping power Nothing is going to work out. But at, because you know, at the end of the day, all these things are in his head and he can't retain whatever is uh, whatever concept we teach in the class. So the emotional well-being of the student basically depends on the family, the family setup, what kind of resources we give them and how we talk to them. See, sometimes what happens, you know, uh, uh, parents give, okay, the child is aspiring for uh, any 
um, competitive exam, like you know nowadays Inter. When you take the example of Inter, we 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 try. The child is aspiring for IIT. Uh, J mains and also we the child asks for books and people parents keep buying books but at the end of the day we buy the book we purchase the book for them and then we say I'm going to see how much you're going to score that is an additional stress on the child our duty is to buy to give the proper resources for her or him and then see she will definitely work out he or she will definitely work out and try to get an outcome but you know when we say this additional we are doing our job of buying the book but at the end of the day when we see um let me see how you are going to score i'm spending so much money on purchasing these book for you every now and then i have to purchase a book for you let me see what you are going to get or definitely you have to get in iit there is no chance because I've spent so much money. There is no chance that you fail that. This is all additional stress on the child. The child, more than concentrating on the content, will concentrate, will try to uh, work for his parent. The parent who has so much of uh, hopes on the child, the child is unnecessarily under a stress. So it's always good that we try to keep the child emotionally stable. Let's do our job. The child also, let's try to create an atmosphere where the child feels wholesome and he can, he or she can put their 100%. We have to create such an atmosphere. Yes, ma'am. Next slide. Right. So that was all about the uh, psychology, in which way we can prepare the student when he's, he or she is in our class. Now, no, this classroom psychology basically involves two important things. One is classroom behavior. Another one is class control and class management. So when I speak about uh, classroom behavior, now what exactly um, I mean to say about classroom behavior is that, you know, as the term implies, it is a complex um, interplay of interaction, um, activities, and um, the things that we conduct within a learning environment, specifically within the confines of a classroom. You know, it represents a multitude of factors, like, you know, the emotional state of the student, their attitude towards learning, whether they are interested or no, then their interpersonal skills, the interpersonal skill of the student here, then, you know, <clears throat> the cultural norms cultural norms as i say you know the, the definitely there is a difference uh, from state to state so when you get a student from another state to our state uh, then definitely it takes time for the student to adjust to the teacher to the people to his classmates to the surrounding to everything so cultural norms also play a very important role and um, the behavioral tendency of the student you know some students need to be pampered you shout at them and you say you're not doing this work i'm going to mark you absent or of course stand out of my class or giving them in position the student will never set right that's the reason the very beginning of my presentation i've told we have to connect with the student in order to understand what is their mindset okay there are students we have a mixture of students in the class so there are students who love to um, listen to us when they are pampered there is a different style of dealing with them then you have to say see you have to make him realize him or her make them realize if you don't do this just imagine how much your parents are struggling hard for you. You also have to live in this society. You have to grow. What are your dreams and ambitions in order to achieve that? Then you have to study well. So there's always a way of you have to mentor the student. The teacher is not only a teacher in delivering the content. I have come here to talk about so-and-so topic. I will just finish off talking whether the student has received it or no. That is secondary. That shouldn't be there. That was happening some time back. But right now, when we want a holistic education to be provided to the student, we have to see that the student understands what we are teaching and also knows why we, why he is learning that. What is the essence of learning that and how is he going to apply it in the real time world? So all these three questions should be uh, fulfilled in the classroom. When the teacher is teaching, the teacher should, first of all, deliver the concept properly and the teacher should also tell the student why he is delivering that particular topic, what is the need of that topic, why he has to understand that topic, why the student has to understand the topic, and how the student is going to apply the topic in the real time situation. Anytime, whenever he's facing that problem, how he's going to apply that particular concept which the teacher has taught 
in the real time life okay so uh, behavior tendency as i told you you have to understand the student for some students even if you are rough they will set right but for some students you you have to pamper them and make them understand make them self realize so the behavioral tendency of the student is very important <clears throat> you know understanding the uh, importance of this uh, classroom behavior is very crucial because you know it is it is actually giving rise to the learning environment if you don't understand the student then it is a chaos then no one fellow will be sleeping one fellow will be thinking something one fellow will be distracting others so we have to understand all the 50 students in the class what is their uh, way of thinking what is their way of grasping the knowledge what is their behavior pattern then it is very easy for us to deliver our content uh, you know teachers can Uh, manage the classroom behavior through a range of techniques which which will suit that student okay so uh, we should have a choice of strategies and these strategies basically they depend on age and development state of the student you know at what age now for a small child how i am teaching a kindergarten student i can't teach the same level to a college student so definitely with age there is change in the uh, cognitive capacity of this child and definitely there is a uh, increase in the wisdom of the child also and then the uh, physical environment of the classroom also plays a very important role when i say physical environment you know uh, it is how the things are to be meant to be in a classroom the benches should be neatly organized the board should be neat then the uh, uh, play you know the dais where the teacher stands and delivers her content should be proper there should the fan the light uh, you know everything the resources whatever we see inside the classroom all that should be intact okay that definitely comes under the um, infrastructure which is uh, maintained by the management but this also plays a very important role the classroom's physical environment plays a very important role for the child to grasp the knowledge suppose you know there is no fan and the child is sweating definitely he is not going to understand the concept okay or else you know the benches are not organized properly uh, all the front benches are left vacant and the student is sitting somewhere at the back then the student will not understand anything it is a role of the teacher to organize the students properly if you can remember long time back no we used to make uh, we used to give the teachers used to give the classroom uh, benching benches a lot seating allotment for the students you have to sit with him he, she has to sit with her we used to organize nowadays at college level so we don't do that but i guess in school level uh, one talkative child is made to sit with a normal silent child or one below average student is made to sit with a above average student so that you now there is exchange of information and the child tries to grow so the uh, uh, bench mate okay the partner who is sitting along with you in the bench is also plays a very important role so all these are classrooms physical environment and then you know how we handle the behavior of the child this is also very important uh, sometimes what happens when a student doesn't uh, do his assignment all of a sudden we lose our temper it somewhere it hurts our ego actually to be very frank at least for the uh, naive teachers the teachers who have less experience uh, young teachers it somewhere hurts their ego and how come you didn't do my work i told you to do the homework you didn't do and we just thrash on them shout at them the student also has self respect nowadays each and every individual right from the school this child also has self respect so we have uh we are not supposed to i don't say we have no right but we are not supposed to do this okay the child has not done the homework the student has not done a homework give a suitable punishment okay wherein he realizes the punishment should be in such a way wherein the student realizes what he has not done and then he tries to do that thing it shouldn't be just like formality or oh, go stand outside the class or else uh, write 10 times in position or call your parents and come tomorrow what is the outcome we are not going to re uh, reach any conclusion with this if you build a proper rapport with your student if you have a good connection with your student what whatever you tell the student will immediately grasp it the student will feel that why I, why didn't i do might be he had some other work or he, he was not well uh, 
reasons might be he has not done that work he will feel for it okay i didn't do this i'm responsible for it make this child feel responsible rather than be imposing punishments on the student give him or realize make him realize him or her realize what he has not done so this behavior issues uh, you know should be handled properly in the class neither praise any student outrightly in the class neither discriminate the student try to be neutral as much as possible you want to discriminate or be harsh on a student call them aside mentor them aside okay uh, because you know students are very sensitive as we have good and bad effects of uh, social media one of the uh, effect of social media is that the student has become very sensitive so it's the teacher has to be very conscious enough in when we are dealing with the student okay and when you're screaming or shouting at one student you know, the rest of the 40 who are sitting they are also scared if whatever answers they know they are also going to forget those answers so let's be quite pleasant in the classroom the role of the teacher is a is like a facilitator we have to be very pleasant so that the student opens up and asks us what we what they if at all they have any doubt they should feel welcoming to ask us it shouldn't be like oh ma'am is already angry you know if i ask her what is she going to do she's not going to answer me it shouldn't be like that try to create a conducive environment to the student wherein the student feels that yes the teacher is approachable i can ask her right then <clears throat> um other things that come under classroom behavior uh, first of all you know when you get into the classroom you have to uh, set clear expectations what you what is the topic today what is the objective of the topic why you are learning it and what is the outcome the student should be clear with what we are our content delivery should be very clear the student should know today's class why he has attended what he has learned of that class what is that he is going to apply so we have to set very clear expectations then uh, we also have to uh, you know see that see there is a difference there is a difference that sometimes the student understands it but we also have to check whether the student has understood the concept in the way that we want him to understand there are all chances that the student can understand it differently also so how are we going to do that we are going to ask him some questions always when you ask questions the classroom should be interactive it shouldn't be only teacher centric only where the teacher keeps talking like a radio and the student is at peace it shouldn't be like that it should always be interactive wherein the child wherein the student also is alert the student is conscious in a phone don't know which moment ma'am is going to ask me which question you have to build up the creative skills in the student the cognitive skills of the student should be developed we are having six to seven different cognitive skills all these skills should be developed with the uh, student okay ma'am next slide so this is about the classroom behavior uh, then Ma'am, uh, you have to unmute, ma'am. Extremely sorry for the inconvenience. There was a power fluctuation at my end. Okay. So now coming on to the next one, children are not born with an understanding of the rules of acceptable behavior. They have to learn them and need adults help to do this. So as I told you before also, we as facilitators, we teachers as facilitators have to uh, make the students understand. You know, we have to train them how they can 
accept whatever we are teaching, how they can imbibe what we are teaching. That is the first thing. Apart from that also, no, it is always, um, as I told you, apart from only delivering the content, it is useful. It is important that we give them a wholesome or a holistic education. Next slide, ma'am. Teacher plays a very important role here. Importance of classroom management. So till now we have seen about classroom behavior. Now we're going to see about classroom management. Now what exactly is classroom management? Classroom management is how we are going to uh, main, uh, you know, conduct our 45 minutes or 55 minutes, whatever is a, uh, you know, composition of your one hour of class, your one period, how we are going to manage that 45 or 55 minutes of the class. So why is this classroom management important? There are three basic reasons why is it important. First one is it creates and sustains an orderly learning environment in the classroom. Okay, the class should be in such a way, a conducive environment. Okay, wherein the student receives whatever we are teaching them. The student should feel, I should not, uh, you know, discipline the student that listen to me, listen to me, are you listening to me? No, this shouldn't be the regular statement. The student himself should feel responsible to listen. The student should feel anxious or he should be inquisitive enough to understand, okay, what's going to happen next? What is this concept? And uh, what is going to happen next? What is the outcome of this? You have to generate interest in the student. So it creates and sustains an orderly learning environment in the classroom. Next, improves meaningful academic learning and fosters social and emotional growth. So this is about the holistic development of the student. The second point, third one, increases students' academic engagement. So as I told you, if the content delivery is very boring, suppose the teacher is only using the chalk and talk method, we can always show some visual presentations, some simulations wherein the student uh, gains interest. That same mundane way of, way of teaching, old method of teaching. There are, of course, definitely the chalk and uh, board method is the best way of delivering the content. But sometimes to make our classes more interesting, we can use additional fe uh, features. We can show uh, some visual presentations or we can you introduce gamification also. Try to teach them something through games. Make the child more. When the child is, uh, you know, mostly after the lunch, the hour which comes after the lunch, the child is always sleepy because he eats full. Uh, tummy full of lunch, the child is always sleepy. So try to, um, um, you know, deliver your teaching content through a game. Okay, so gamification is a new, uh, a new method of teaching learning activity. In, uh, somewhere where, in, you know, or you can conduct a group discussion or you can conduct a debate, something like that, wherein, you know, the child feels involved. The child is also into the class. It's not all, always one way of delivering the content. Next slide, ma'am. Now, four components of classroom management. The first one is classroom design. So as I told you, everything should be placed in order. It means the class should be neat. The desk should be arranged properly. And if you have a notice board or a bulletin board, all the latest happening, first thing, your timetable should be on the board. Then apart from that, you know, all the latest happenings, uh, you know, suppose you are a uh, biology teacher, any new discoveries, yes, or whoever got the latest Nobel Prize, the, those names of those scientists, their pictures, or anything, whatever is happening, um, how, uh, uh, whoever, uh, who is that um, person, um, our Williams, who is uh, stuck in this uh, space, so how NASA is tracking to get her back, how she's losing her uh, muscle mass, okay, all these things, any latest discoveries, which is related to their subject content, that can be uh, presented on the bulletin board. So always keep the class uh, neat, okay, and then rules and discipline. So when it comes to rules and discipline, no, so this is very, very important. Uh, so here, mm, the most important thing is the child learns everything from the teacher. Suppose the teacher herself arrives, arrives late to the class. Okay, suppose 1020 is a second hour and the teacher comes somewhere around 1035. So we ourselves are 15 minutes late to the class. What is the message that we are giving to the student? The teacher herself is not punctual to the class. Definitely the student will also come late to the class. The student will be late. 
the student will learn a lot from the teacher from parents as well as from teacher teacher has major influence on the child's mind and body the teacher uh, the student will whole and soul look up to the teacher my teacher told this my madam told this my miss told this the teach the child is always you know he's influenced by the teacher so first of all the teacher should have a proper discipline definitely our outlook also plays a very important role how well we are dressed when i say how well we are dressed how modest we are in our dressing which suits our uh, job so if we are neat and clean definitely the student also will come neat and clean to the class okay how trimmed we are well, if we are uh, hygienically good this gives a good uh message to the student the student learns from us no so when it comes to rules and discipline you know it, it all depends upon how we are how we conduct the classroom uh, suppose any student is talking is asking some question let us peacefully listen to the student you know just we listen to the first two words and try to give an answer so what are we exhibiting to the student that we are not good listeners the student also happens to learn the same thing okay so we don't have to listen completely they also become impatient like us it shouldn't be like that try to develop listening skills in the student how do we develop that they reflect it from us only so we have to first of all have patience to listen to the queries of our students okay then uh, whenever the student wants to answer or whenever he wants to question he has to raise his hand it shouldn't be a chorus answer so all these things you know these rules and regulations let us tell the student before we start our class okay the beginning first day when we enter the class no let us tell this is the way i'm going to take my attendance everyone has to be silent when i'm taking my attendance so that you answer when your number is announced okay if at all you want to ask any question or you want to answer you have to lift your hand you are not supposed to give chorus answers you are not supposed to talk to your uh, neighboring student or you are not supposed to borrow your stationery if it is for school level so all these rules and regulations how you are supposed to to and simply not loitering out uh, out in the class you know even when the teacher is drawing some diagram on the board the student at the back keep running here and there all this is not good okay so all these things have to be told to the student beforehand so this you know this tries to create a kind of discipline it we imbibe a kind of discipline in the student which they will follow for their life basically time management being punctual if the teacher is punctual definitely the student will be punctual throughout his life because he will learn that concept of punctuality from the teacher even when he is working he will be punctual so the discipline uh, concept comes from the teacher how good the teacher is that good is a student it is directly proportional then scheduling and organizing organization once again being on ta uh, time keeping on task and staying and one more important thing when i say i am going to do this for you i am going to show a presentation on so and so topic on so and so day you see that you stick on to it if we ourselves don't stand on our word we keep postponing our things i'm going to take you on a field visit on so and so day please take them on so and so day i'm going to show you i'm going to we are going to have a hands on experience on so and so uh, concept please take them to the lab and deliver the concept give them hands on experience just don't speak in air let the student feel that yes whatever my mam says she does it so then the such kind of uh, you know um, this concept is imbibed in the student and he will also live for it then instructional technique now this is very very important when i say instructional technique it all depends upon how the uh, you know uh, how we come prepared to the class it depends upon the teacher first and foremost the teacher should be good with the concept the teacher should be thorough in the concept and then she has to come prepared to the class because you know as i told you we have a mixture of students in the class so when i come to the class the way i am going to deliver my content might be 10 students are understanding what about the remaining 40 so i have to teach them in different ways how they will receive it their learning style i have to know their learning style and deliver my content according to their learning style so first time i'm going to teach in a general way suppose the students understand i'm blessed i don't have any problem but suppose a student doesn't understand i have to find alternative ways of teaching okay as i told you either i have to show it in the form of a picture or i have to cite an example or i have to uh, act 
enact and show it or have to show it practically so there are different styles or strategies of teaching so my instructional technique is very very important for which i have to be confident with the concept if i am confident with the concept then i can uh, you know revise the strategy of teaching so that it reaches to every student right from the first rank holder to the most uh, below average student also next one ma'am the classroom management secret i'm just going to summarize it once when i say classroom management secret so first and foremost as the teacher enters into the class be on time dress well be modest when i say uh, dress well it is to be modest you know which suits our profession that means to be um, to be uh, clean to be hygienically good and so that the student learns something from us to be neat and tidy and then when you enter the class enter on time and then look at the students when we wish them most of us how do we wish the students when they say good morning ma'am or good morning miss whatever it is you know we are also you know we somewhere uh, because we are all grown up individuals we have so many problems at home all those things keep running in our mind but i tell you the moment we enter into the portals of our school or college we have to leave back our personal life at the doorstep and when we enter into the school or college we are all uh, you know devoted and dedicated to our student because you know we are all working with living individuals we are not corporate employees we are working with you know some um, agenda or we are working with some non living things it's not like that we are working with living beings we are trying to shape the future of our society so it's very important that we are emotionally balanced if we are emotionally balanced then we can deliver the right things in the right proportion to our student so when you enter the class kindly leave all your personal problems at home and be professional and look at the students and greet them good morning and suppose you happen to find someone who is sick then ask them what's happening you know you're unwell what happened and always see that we we call we recollect our students rather than their numbers now you uid number 1 uid unique id number 1 or roll number 1 roll number 2 instead of that it is good that we uh, talk to them we call them with their name we address them with their names yeah, what happened uh, uh, shruti what happened take their name so when we take their name they feel connected uh, we greet them properly look at them if they are unwell if they were absent yesterday it is very good that we remember and ask them why were you absent yesterday what's happening aren't you well in which way i can help you see yesterday i taught this topic you for, uh, you you missed it please come back you first read if you are not understanding please come back i'll try to help you out have that personal bond with the student and you take the roll call you take the attendance once you take the attendance try to recap what happened in the previous class ask them some questions of what happened in the previous class so you know this instills a fear in the student so that they come prepared for every class of us suppose yesterday i have taught um you know some concept on um uh, electrovalency or um, uh, uh, the photosynthesis whatever concept i have taught see that the next class i ask the student questions about the previous class at least some four or five students randomly so that students are always scared enough okay man is going to ask the next day and once you finish that first tell the objective of your class whatever topic i'm going to teach today please tell the objective this is the objective or aim of the topic that i'm teaching today we are going to learn all these things and what is the outcome and how am i going to uh, you know um solve in case i have any real time situation how am i going to um, connect it with the real time society okay you finish teaching after teaching it is your it is our duty that we repeat the concept at least twice in the class first time is a general teaching then other two times whether if students will not there did you all understand definitely everyone will say yes we have understood but then also it is our duty that we teach them for the next two times also because suppose they have missed out any points then it is good for them to catch catch back on it and then see that you know they write it the important points we can dictate so that the student will make a note of the important points whatever how much ever they listen no there are all chances of forgetting see that the main points are dictated and the students makes a note of it so it is helpful for the student to 
prepare at home so that whatever questions we are asking in the next day he will come prepared he will learn from whatever points we have dictated and he will come prepared for the next day then after that you give when you are asking them when you finish your dictation then you ask them are there any doubts or in any way that we can uh you want me to explain it much better means you no know, sometimes what happened there are some theoretical concept but there are some con uh, concepts which we have to visualize for example if i'm talking about dna replication then definitely uh, the student has to understand what is dna replication how the two strands of dna are divided what's happening so i have to show them a powerpoint presentation so next day i can come prepared with a powerpoint presentation there are different teaching methodologies okay so try to all the time try to use different types of teaching methodologies okay that makes a class interesting and the attention span of the student is very less maximum in a class of 50 minutes maximum the student can be conscious and listen to us only for 30 minutes 25 to 30 minutes so we have to you know prepare our class in such a crispy way that in that 25 to 30 minutes we have to deliver the content to them if we are crossing the time of 30 minutes and still going on teaching then it is very difficult the student will not understand in fact he will get confused so our preparation at home should be so good that you know whatever we have learned prepare make a gist out of it and focus it in that 25 to 30 minutes to the student so that the student gets a clarity on the concept okay so you are you have to use innovative teaching pedagogies and then you have to keep in mind that uh, attention focus of the child and deliver the content in a very crispy manner and then you are welcome the students are welcome definitely the student will have a doubt and we have to go to their places rather than simply standing on the dais and explaining go to their places and see did you understand there are some students you know who are now that is the way they are they will not open up and say yes i understood or no i didn't understand they will not say so we have to go connect with them personally and say did you get it is it clear for you okay if it is clear try to summarize summarizing the class is very important as a teacher it is good for us also that we summarize so if at all the student has forgotten anything they will understand when we are summarizing the class so we have to prepare the class in such a way that you know we don't have to sit and think or we don't have to fall in short of time you prepare the class in such a way that yes first 5 minutes for attendance and asking the student about why they were absent yesterday the next 10 minutes is asking about the previous class questions and the remaining 25 to 30 minutes is a concept that i want to deliver and the last 5 10 minutes for summarizing or else to you know uh, clear their doubts something like that so you have to uh, you have to frame the given 45 to 50 minutes how you are going to conduct the class that is called classroom management okay the teacher should be confident enough to manage the class in a proper way wherein the content is delivered to the student we are not doing it as a formality we are consciously trying to deliver the content so that the student receives it and uh, generates an outcome out of it next one ma'am yeah these are some of the quotes you know just to i have i'm done with my presentation these are some of the quotes you know just to support the concept what i'm telling today the number one problem in the classroom is not discipline it is a lack of authentic learning task procedures and routine so as i told you, you know uh, the teacher thinks that if the classroom is spin drop silent i am doing a good job absolutely not what is the main aim of the teacher whatever concept i want to teach that should be received by the student that is the main aim of the teacher right so for that you know i have to be thoroughly prepared i have to be confident on the topic what i am teaching okay and now because of social media the student knows more than us so try to cover almost all the points what are the latest updates what notes i prepared 10 years back if i'm going to sit and teach the same notes then definitely i'll be an outdated teacher the uh, student will not like me i have to always update the content okay so i have to be confident i have to know how to handle my class that 50 minutes how am i going to handle children learn more from who you are than what you teach so as i told you my skills how whether i am punctual the way how i communicate how polite i am how much i listen to the student how i treat the student 
do i shout at them or uh, when he, am i approachable for the student so that he comes and asks me question all these things are displayed in the 50 minutes of my class the student is keenly observing me okay why some students come and approach us some don't come because you know their levels of perceptions are different they feel no ma'am is biased i can't go to her ma'am gets angry i can't go to her or ma'am doesn't know anything i will learn from the internet so there are different perception levels of the student we have to keep all all the 50 minds are looking at us so we have to be thoroughly confident and we have to know how to handle that 50 minutes in the class okay an effective teacher manages a classroom an ineffective teacher disciplines a classroom so as i said our aim is not to maintain silence in the class our aim is to deliver the content to the student and see how the student has understood it and how he is applying it it's the teacher that makes a difference and not the classroom definitely how much our ai comes okay ai cannot replace a teacher a teacher's role is far more than everything actually you know we are more responsible previously before before all these uh, ai or uh, social network you know it was whole and soul teacher who was doing the teaching now you know we are challenged we are challenged at every level of our life wherein this child reads beforehand from the internet and he will come and test the intelligence of the teacher. So, you know, the teacher should be so good, so thoroughly prepared to her class that she's able to confront any type of question that comes from the topic. Okay, so definitely. And as I'm telling you again and again, the role of the teacher is not only to deliver the content. The role of the teacher is also to build the individual. Please uh, spare some time out of your busy uh, teaching schedule of, as I told you in the 50 minutes, uh, 25 to 30 minutes is the attention span of the students. So apart from that, no, generating values to the student, values like respect your elders, don't talk lies, talk politely, all these things come with the way we behave in the class. Okay, so silently we deliver certain message to the student and some things we have to verbally tell them how they have to, uh, you know, networking is so important in today's society. So how they have to live. Life skills are also very important. Apart from telling them about the content, it is very essential for us to imbibe certain qualities in the student so that they face the world, develop wisdom in the student, let them understand why they are living. We, we shouldn't exist. We are all existing. We shouldn't exist. We have to live with life. So teach good values. Apart from teaching content, it is my sincere request to all the teaching fraternity that we teach good values. Because at the end of the day, you know, we all live with our values. We all live by our values. See, even if you fail 10 standard 10 times, or even if you flunk in your degree two times, at the end of the day, you will be placed and you are earning a five-digit salary. Money, if we have to earn, we are definitely earning. An unqualified, uneducated person is also earning money. But the true essence of education is imbibing the right values. When we say he's an educated person, it means that he's having some values in him. It is the responsibility of the teacher to imbibe those values. How to face the society, how to be strong. During times of distress, the child should not feel suicidal. Okay, all these things mainly depends on we teachers because the child spends maximum of his time with us and they listen to us, they believe in us. So it is our responsibility that we give them good values apart from the content. Next slide, ma'am. In an effective classroom, students should not only know what they are doing, they should also know why and how they are going to do that. So this is what I have talked before also. Next slide, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, see, whatever I had to tell, this is the thing. Normally in my classes also, no, I uh, whatever I told you all today, this is the way how I conduct my classes. Okay, I'm here into this teaching field for the past 20 years. And this is the way I conduct my class. I always tell them, see, content, if you're not learning today, I will tell you another two, three times, you will definitely learn. But values which I'm going to give you today, 
it is it will be useful for you for your lifetime so please focus on what i am teaching sometimes the students will think that oh she is passing the time in the class might be she is not come prepared to the class that's why she is talking so i beforehand tell the students i am going to teach values apart from teaching the content i am going to teach values and i feel it is essential because you know nowadays the students are falling off track with this uh, interference of social media so let's take some time and in our classroom management let's also talk about values the teacher has to be confident at the end of the day we have to be emotionally balanced because we are dealing with live individuals we are not working in some software company where we are dealing with computers we are dealing with live individuals so let's be more emotionally balanced and teach them the right values thank you any questions i'm here to answer